Good morning everyone. Today we're going to do a little review of this 2010 Subaru Outback. This is the premium trim with the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. Makes 170 horsepower, 170 foot pounds of torque. Has a CVT. This is the third generation of the Subaru Outback. It first came out in 2000. It's kind of a burly version of the Legacy Wagon. This also is a version of the Legacy. In fact, the owner's manual has lots of overlap, but the third generation that came out in 2010 was a great departure from the previous two in that instead of just being a simple wagon, they've raised the Outback by several inches, giving it an 8.7 inch ground clearance and pushing it more into the SUV category than the wagon category. Let's talk a little bit about the styling. We have a few uh, creases going down the hood with these kind of Hawkeye headlights. If you squint real hard, it's kind of reminiscent of an Infiniti G37 or an Infiniti EX from back in the day. It's an interesting styling choice. You have these kind of knobby textures on the front lower fascia and that kind of plastic that follow through into the side molding. Side of the car, it's pretty bland. You do have kind of a rounded off character line big wheel arches into kind of a softer shaped rear end. It's, it's conservatively styled, it's pretty attractive. You know, the Outback is one of the most successful vehicles Subaru has made. So in this video we're going to get it on the road, we're going to see how it drives, what's the engine noise, how's the steering feel. We're also going to get inside, see what the front and rear seat room, seat comfort is like, and then we're going to give it a short score. Let's start off in the back seat of the 2010 Subaru Outback. First of all, I have plenty of legroom. I probably have about three inches of legroom behind the seat in front of me that's adjusted for my six foot one self. Lots and lots of headroom, Sev several inches of headroom. You can see uh, we have half the seat uh, folded down. Pretty nicely sized uh, blind spot. Uh, I would say it's small in size, especially uh, in comparison to some of today's cars, seat pillars. Rear window is relatively wide, and you can see with the rear seats folded down, it's a 60-40 rear split. You have tons of cargo room back here. Essentially, this is still a wagon. They don't want you to know that, but it's a raised wagon. Let's talk about the uh, materials back here. You do have a padded armrest. Top of the door is padded. You have this nice kind of fake chrome accent in here. This is the premium trim, so you do not get rear and, uh, rear seat ventilation. You do have one back seat pocket for the right seat passenger, not for the left. You do have a pretty sizable hump in the floor, so if someone's sitting in the middle, that might be a problem. In terms of the back seat comfort, the, the seat back is relatively uh, cushioned, and the seat cushion itself is relatively short, kind of lacking thigh support. It's a little bit on the flat side, but I can see this being uh, relatively comfortable for long trips. The seat back is reclinable. Here's a view into the forward cockpit, and we'll get up there in just a second. Here we are in the front seat of the Subaru Outback. It's a pretty stylish place to be. You have that uh, fake chrome trim going from the dash into the door design. You know, it's modestly styled, no crazy lines. You have a soft character line through the upper glove box area there, it continues into the top of the door. Although when you touch around, you realize everything is hard plastic. It's nicely textured, it has this kind of fake leather texture to it and this kind of brushed metal texture here. You have uh, typical climate knobs, nice feeling buttons and knobs that are solidly secure. Uh, tuning knob, radio knob, no fancy infotainment here. This is 2010. CD player, analog gauges, leather steering wheel. Uh, it's on the thin side with uh, some steering controls. A pillar is also on the smaller side. The side windows, this is the one peculiar thing of the 2010 model, the side windows do not fold. They don't fold. They did for the 2009 model, and they did for the 2011 model, and I honestly think they forgot for the 2010 model. You have a power adjustable driver's seat that is fairly comfortable, it does have lumbar adjustments. This is definitely a comfort oriented seat. So the seat cushion, it's nicely padded. The side bolsters are, you know, small, but they're, they're there a little bit. 
the seat cushion itself is on the shorter side, but you can adjust the angle so you can get some thigh support out of it. The seat backs, you can see there are some stronger bolsters there that kind of taper as you go up. So it's a comfortable, uh, comfortable seat. It's definitely not a sporty feeling seat, but there is there's some support where you need it. We have a conventional shifter for the uh, CVT, and there is a manual mode that's operated through paddle shifters on the wheel. We can go through six fake gears, and we can test those out as we go along. Right, let's start this thing. <laughs> Typical key ignition. Electronic parking brake, but it's backwards from a typical one. Instead of pushing it down to release it, you have to pull it back in order to release it. So if you're coming from a traditional standard parking brake, that's going to be an adjustment. We have uh, front seat heaters from the premium trim. That's nice on a cold winter day like this. the first things you notice right away is this is not a speed machine. You really have to push into it, get the power. This is one of Super's first iterations of a CVT and they didn't get the tuning quite right so this one likes to rev up high, hold the revs, it has symmetrical all-wheel drive of course being a Super's that adds extra weight and being a bigger taller vehicle than generations past. It's a, it's a heavy car so for it to only have 170 horsepower it does feel a little bit underpowered at times, especially going up hills. Initial impressions though, besides the engine whining away, minimal wind noise, minimal road noise, it's a very comfortable car. Steering's a little bit on the heavy side, there's not a lot of feel. There is a disconnect between the wheel and the front tires, but there is some weight there. You have a miles per gallon meter on the left side. Neutral on the reading is your average miles per gallon at that point in your tank. And if you're getting better than that, it shows positive. If you're getting worse than that, it shows negative. Essentially, it's an inverse meter from your gas pedal. Okay, so far, it's a very comfortable cruising vehicle at 45 miles an hour. Engine's turning about 1,300 RPM. It's very quiet. There was base, premium, and limited. And on top of that, it has a uh, 3.6 liter V6 engine. That was an option for 2010. Made about 240 horsepower, if I remember correctly. But of course, that you trade a fuel mileage. There are no drive modes in this car. What you get is what you get. It's just drive. There is an ability to turn off traction control. We'll get to that when we get to the twisties. Whoa. This drives very similarly to the Impreza that we tested a, a month ago in that there is a substantial delay from the moment you press the accelerator to when the engine actually wakes up and gives you acceleration. And sometimes you will realize you've pressed in a little bit farther than you thought and the engine kind of whacks you in the back of your seat. Of course not too hard because it only has 170 horsepower. There's a little sense of the horn. A little dinky for a crossover SUV like this. If you're trying to send a message, get out of my way! Beep. So, a little emasculating. This car does have cruise control, but it's uh, before the age of advanced safety, so there's no backup camera, no blind spot monitoring, no rear cross traffic alert, no forward collision warning, no lane departure warning, no any of that. It's all, you have to do it by yourself. It's very soft, comfort oriented suspension, a little bit firmer in the rear. Of course, this is a Subaru, it's designed to be, designed to go off road, so. It needs to be able to take some harder bumps from off-road stuff, so make it stiffer in some areas, softer in other areas, but for everyday driving, it's definitely on the softer end of the spectrum. 
There's a decent amount of body roll too, if we do the jiggle test. A lot of body roll. <laughs> this car does have stability control. Right now, 40 miles an hour, about 1200 RPM. This car was trying to give you some fuel economy. Back in the day, I was rated at 22 city, 29 highway. I believe those numbers have been revised for modern standards. I'm gonna turn off traction control. We're gonna go on to the twisties. All right. A lot of body roll, but this does have four wheel drive. It does help pull you through the turns. See how the steering is. The steering's a little bit on the heavy side. It's fairly direct, but again, there's not a direct in the sense that the amount that you turn the wheel is the amount that the car turns, but there's not a direct sensation between the wheel and the front tires. Very artificial. But it, I mean, it handles surprisingly well for a car of this size. Um, just because of that four wheel drive, there's not a ton of understeer, but the soft suspension really does let you down. That's really where the handling chops kind of fall down is how much the car just sags over. We throw it into the manual mode. Every gear is spaced approximately 500 RPM apart. So one through five is all 500 RPM apart and then five to six is a bigger jump, about 700 RPM. It will automatically upshift and downshift for you, you know, just to protect the life of the transmission and make sure that you don't do anything stupid because manufacturers don't trust the drivers these days. When you're in the manual mode, you can get a decent amount of engine braking, especially in lower gears. The steering right in center is a little bit dead. Right in here, you can feel the car jiggling just barely. It takes a little bit bigger inputs in order for the car to respond, but then when you do that, it's it's a roly-poly ride. This car is not, you would not call this fun to drive. It's not very satisfying, not very engaging. It it does what you tell it to do, but it you can tell it's not really having a, a fun time. Wow. From the moment you press the upshift lever, the transmission starts to respond pretty quickly, but the amount of time it takes for each of the gears to transition is uh, laughably long. Wow, it's very rubber bandy, it's not snappy at all. You can tell in the Impreza that we tested, you know, 12 years after this, they've had 12 years of refining the CVT and they were able to get those shifts a little bit snappier. Here it's, uh, you. I mean, you heard it. And that's one gear. Let's see how it is over some speed bumps. Yep, front suspension's a little bit on the softer side than the than the rear suspension. Uh, when the rear suspension lands, it's a little bit firm and it bounces a little bit, but definitely comfort oriented. You know, let's examine that throttle delay. I'll give you an example of when I'm pressing the gas. Gas. There's the power. We'll do it again after the speed bump just so you can hear that again. There is a significant, maybe half a second delay. Gas. So, there's some transmission tuning that needs to uh, be done because it seems like the gas pedal and the drivetrain are about three time zones apart from each other. But this car clearly does not have any sporting intentions. You're not going to autocross this car. You're not going to track day this car. You're not going to drag race other cars on the road. It'll lose. <laughs> yeah, so this car is meant to be comfortable, practical, potentially somewhat efficient, reliable. I mean, the car tries to hug the turns. There's a lot of body roll. On throttle. Yeah, the car goes where you point it. Off throttle, a little bit more understeer.
<laughs> oh yeah, some understeer and a lot of body roll once you take out that wheel, the whole car just shakes itself back over to level. I mean, that all-wheel drive does miracles for this car because you have some, the rear drive, the rear wheels help pull the car through the turn. So when you push it, a mixture of surprisingly okay, but also very obvious this is not a sports car. Let's see some of the weight transfer of the car going into a roundabout. Whoa, a lot of understeer. <laughs> as soon as you get on the gas, it kind of puts itself back together, but off throttle, this thing's a jiggly, kind of a jiggly mess. I mean, it's safe. It's not out of control, but uh, it does not. It's one of those kids that when you tell it to do something, like, do I have to? Okay. That's kind of how it handles. Some cars drive smaller than they are, and this is not one of them. This car drives exactly as big as it is. About nine inches off the ground, all-wheel drive, wagony SUV thing. That's exactly what it is. But if that's what you want, if you want something that drives predictably, and is quiet, and is comfortable, and you don't care about it being sporty or fast, it's gonna be a great car for you. It's back in the day, Volvo wagons, Volkswagen wagons, uh, those are going to be your more engaging choices. Maybe an accurate TSX wagon, but again, those are pure wagons. They haven't been raised off the ground and given plastic all over the place, or at least not yet. Fast forward to the late 2010s and everyone tried to become a Subaru Outback. But in the end, a lot of those products have still come off the market. Regal Tourex. A lot, of the, a lot of these raised wagons that are masquerading as an Outback, uh, Honda Cross Tour, Toyota Venza, they've all gone away. So, you know, Venza came back in a different form, but the Outback endures because this is what people want. It's an outdoors ready, all wheel drive, raised, practical vehicle. Let's do another manual mode acceleration. Gears are quite tall. Gears are quite tall, and of course, as you rev the engine, once it gets certainly above 3,000 RPM, it makes itself known. Speed limit's going up, gas. Just holds those revs until you got the speed you want. It's very elastic, rubber bandy kind of a drivetrain. The way that this car drives is like watching a little pudgy kid in fifth grade in gym class. He's trying as hard as he can, man, but he just can't get up on that balance beam. He's trying, but everyone's kind of watching. He's good at other things. He knows math. He's good at English. But uh, as soon as you try to start pushing us athletic limits, it kind of falls down on his face. If you accelerate into it smoothly, that delay is gone. It's really when you push into it that it's like, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa sorry, acceleration got you. Similar to the Impreza, under normal acceleration, when you get to about 10 to 15 miles an hour, the power kind of cuts out from you. It's not quite to the degree that the Impreza did it, but you can hold the throttle in the exact same position, and the transmission will go, and then there's this cut of power, and you have to stomp into it harder to continue acceleration at the same rate. It. 
Yep. Very much CVT behavior. <laughs> it's just you always hope for the moment where you get on the gas, your back gets put to the back of your seat, your eyes open. That never happens with this car. Your eyes open because, wow, my car is loud. <laughs> yeah. 65 miles an hour, about 1,900 RPM. Minimal wind noise. A little bit of road noise. Very comfortable. This will be a very comfortable road trip, long road trip car. We go back into the manual mode. Fifth gear, like I said, it'll throw it up to 2,700 RPM. Sixth gear, down to just below 2,000. Sixth gear in the manual mode is slightly higher than drive. So right now we're about 1950 in sixth gear. Throw it over to drive, the RPMs drop to 1900. So there's a slight difference. was a gear shift. That was another gear shift. Yeah, off throttle, a lot of, lot of, lot of body roll, but the car, you know, it has grip. It just doesn't feel very confident. One last turn. Yeah, you can just feel that weight transfer trying to pull the wheels over. If you want a comfortable, quiet, reliable, smooth driving wagon that's raised off the ground for some reason, you'll love it. If you want something a little bit quicker, a little bit more engaging, better handling, look at something else. Now that the test drive is completed, let's give the 2010 Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium a Schwartz score. The Schwartz score is broken down into 12 categories with a total potential score of 100. Scores are given right after the test drive when impressions are still fresh. Exterior styling of the 2010 Subaru Outback is perfectly serviceable for the category. The Hawkeye styled headlights and chunky plastic trim around the bottom edges are standouts compared to the previous Pure Wagon generations. Beyond that, the character lines are rather soft and benign. It is a completely inoffensive and conservative design that doesn't alienate anyone. But is that the purpose of car design? It earns a 4 out of 10. Interior materials are a mixed bag. While there is a nice variety of textures that appear relatively premium, hard touch plastics are not difficult to find. On a positive note, all of the important spots are adequately padded, and the climate and infotainment buttons and knobs are solid and substantial feeling. It gets a 5 out of 10 here. The front seats are a comfortable place to be, especially for longer drives. The premium trim comes with a power-adjusting front seat, including power lumbar support. The seat cushion and lower back provide moderate bolstering, appropriate for the type of vehicle. They are supportive and well-cushioned. However, the seat cushion can be on the shorter side for those with longer legs. Overall, the front seats come out with a 7 out of 10. The rear seats gained much more legroom with the 2010 redesign. Sitting behind myself at 6 foot 1, I had at least 3 inches of legroom and headroom to spare. The seat cushion is on the flatter side and there is a large floor tunnel for whoever may sit in the middle. The seats are relatively plush and the reclining seat backs are a nice touch. Rear seat comfort gets a 6 out of 10. Road noise is kept to a minimum in the Subaru Outback. On most surfaces, the occupants are isolated from the outside world and the cabin is a pleasant place to be. It is clear the Outback was designed to be a road trip car, 4 out of 5 for road noise. Unfortunately, the four-cylinder engine makes itself known, lugging around 3,500 pounds of vehicle with only 170 horsepower. 
Additionally, 2010 was the first year Subaru equipped the Outback with a continuously variable transmission. This transmission will happily rev up to 4 or 5,000 RPM and hold it there until you let off the gas, resulting in an annoying, confidence-sucking, deplorable droning sound. At all other times, the engine is quite hushed. 3 out of 5 here. In terms of acceleration, where a 0 to 60 time below 3 seconds is a 10 and above 9.5 seconds is a 1, the Subaru Outback with its 9.7 seconds 0 to 60 earns a 1 out of 10. The drivetrain, an aforementioned CVT, is not only loud when pushed hard, but also not uber responsive. There is a noticeable delay between hitting the accelerator pedal and receiving acceleration. In addition, while Subaru offers paddle shifters to shift through six artificial gears, the transition from one gear to the next is disappointingly slow. Overall, two out of five for drivetrain. Subaru knows its customers don't flock to the Outback for its handling. As a result, the vehicle is less than inspiring to drive. The raised ride height combined with a comfort-oriented suspension results in copious body roll and weight transfer during spirited driving. The symmetrical all-wheel drive system is the saving grace, reducing understeer and pulling the car through turns. In the end, it gets a 4 out of 10. Steering feel is lacking in the 2010 Subaru Outback. While the steering weight is heavier than average, there is no direct feeling to the front tires. The steering ratio is very linear and the car goes where you point it, but there is no sense the car wants to be driven enthusiastically. It drives like a raised, heavy, cozy wagon. 3 out of 10. Ride quality is where the Outback shines. Bumps and imperfections are easily absorbed without any harsh impacts entering the cabin. The rear axle can land hard over some speed bumps, and one could call the vehicle dynamics a bit jiggly, but the Outback is well suited for road trips, daily driving, and light off-roading excursions. It earns a 7 out of 10 here. Visibility in the 2010 Outback is reasonably good. A and C pillars are small to medium in size, and mirrors are easily adjustable to minimize blind spots. However, the premium trim doesn't come with a backup camera, and depth perception out the rear window can be tricky. Overall, 4 out of 5. This brings the Schwartz score of the 2010 Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium to 50 out of 100. Lastly, the EPA rated the 2010 Subaru Outback with a 4-cylinder and CVT at 21 miles a gallon city, 28 highway. We achieved 24 miles per gallon during our test drive. On a scale where above 50 miles per gallon is a 10 and below 17 miles per gallon is a 1, the Outback earns 3 bonus points.